he'll never go for it. As he walked along the waterfront, Theo had no illusions that his current task was anything but doomed to failure. There was little chance for gain, and presumably much risk of loss. The feeble breeze blowing in of the northwest branch of the Patapsco River shared Theo's lack of enthusiasm. The night was unseasonably warm, but the Bruharcon still wore his heavy leather jacket, as well as the omnipresent black baseball cap. The Sabbath's breathing on our necks, and I'm playing diplomat, he thought, shaking his head. The inner harbor area was quiet. The museums, shops, restaurants, the aquarium. All of them catered to the tourist dollar, and tourists generally went to bed early. This revitalized part of the city was Prince Garlot's pride and joy. Theo didn't understand it. He could only take so much quaint before he gagged. He preferred other parts of the city, real parts of the city, where real, honest-to-God people lived and died. The trickle-down economics of the uptown developers didn't ever seem to trickle that far. But those real neighborhoods weren't where the prince and his refined financier buddies spent their time. So what did they care? They were already the kings of the mountain. They had everything they wanted at the top, and not much was left for anybody else. It didn't have to be their way. Money and influence were like water. Left to themselves, they flowed downhill. Problem was, they never were left to themselves. Some greedy button-down motherfucker was always building a dam, so the thirsty bastards at the bottom of the hill were left with jack shit. What the world needed was somebody to bust some fucking dams. But Theo couldn't honestly say that he lived up to that philosophy. Not all the time, anyway. Not most of the time. Times like tonight, he felt more like a damned houseboy. Yes, sir. No, sir. The pisser was that he could run rock sword over a garlot. Theo could make the prince see things his way, or at least agree to go along. But nothing was ever that simple. Too heavy a hand now caused more problems later. Restraint was the difference between an archon and a thug. Maybe a thug has a better deal, Theo thought. Bust heads now, ask questions later, if at all. The idea wasn't completely foreign to an Archon's job description, but it wasn't the way to go down when a prince was involved, especially a ventral prince. The Blue Blues were just too damn tight. Too many friends, or if not friends, flunkies, in high places. Threaten a ventru and he might give in rather than take a punch. But the next thing you knew, Interpol was on your ass, and your haven was condemned by the local housing authority and bulldozed, and all your credit cards were cancelled. Bad mistake. So on when the kid loves. Like I got time for it. It wouldn't matter whose fiends were hard when the Sabbath rolled into town, but Theo played the game anyway. He stopped about a hundred yards from Garlot's boat. Garlot's fucking schooner, rather. A sterile reproduction of a 19th century merchant ship. The thing reminded Theo of a slave ship. The period was off by at least several decades, but that was the first thought that came to his mind every time he saw it. Lord knew that Garlot got his kicks from playing Lord and Master, but what prince didn't? Theo had it on good authority that, before the prince's embrace, Garlot had been nothing more than a bankrupt pretty noble in England, that in life had threatened him a hell of a lot better than real life. Still, Garlot was prince of Baltimore, had been for a couple of centuries. That said something about the man. He might be an impulsive and arrogant son of a bitch, but he had something going for him, even if that something was only luck. I take lack of our brains any night, Theo muttered to himself. He reached into his jacket and pulled out a pack of unfiltered cigarettes and a small box of matches. Cancer wasn't too big a worry, all things considered. He struck a match on his jacket zipper, lit up, and drew in a big carcinogenic breath. The smoke crept along the back of his throat until he breathed two swirling grey pillars from his nose. Some kindred. Those who went in for things coy, 
played at smoking in the winter, so mortals could notice their lack of breath in the cold air. Theo just liked the taste. He liked old burnt coffee too, and on occasion a sip of blood from a weak dead body. A grey cloud trailing along behind him, Theo continued on towards the prince play ship. He'll never go for it, Theo thought again. He knew it, Jan knew it, but they had at least to make a polite attempt to convince the prince that Jan's plan would work. Garlot would balk. Then they'd play hardball. That was what it was going to come down to. No doubt about it. Political cover bullshit. That's all this visit was about. Us covering 101. Theo hated it, and he hated even more the fact that he played along with it. But here he was. Never mind that the Sabbat were snaking their way north from Washington. Never mind that there were a hundred thousand more productive things that he should be doing. This visit, the whole plan, Theo reminded himself, did have something to do with the Sabbat. But that thought did little to lighten his mood. As he approached the princess ship, a dark silhouette appeared at the top of the gunplank. The figure paused for only a second before stepping out of the darkest shadows. Katrina, child of Prince Garlot, moved smoothly and confidently with a feline predatory grace as she disembarked from the ship. She, too, wore a black leather jacket and a black baseball cap, although with a short ponytail sticking at the back. Theo almost smiled as he and his shapely double met near the edge of the dock. With their similar dress, he could have been looking in a mirror, a funhouse mirror, where the reflection was a foot and at least a hundred pounds smaller, and pale white, instead of dark brown. Your mom always raised you that funny? He asked in a deep, serious rumble. You got appointment? Katrina asked in return. Now Theo did smile slightly. He folded his arms. I think he'll see me. Katrina folded her arms also. I wouldn't go in just yet. And why is that? The sudden explosion that answers Theo's question blasted him and Katrina off their feet. For a drone of instant, as he sailed airborne away from the water, Theo caught sight of a giant fireball that seconds before had been Prince Garlot's ship. Then the Bruharcon landed with all the concussive force of the explosion that had launched him. The impact sent the world spinning. When he finally came to rest, Theo lay on his back for a few more seconds. A smaller eruption of fire and lumber sent another tremor throughout the dock and sprayed him with a shower of flaming debris. Instinctively, he covered his face, his only exposed skin other than his hands. When most of the fragments of the USS Apollo had stopped landing all around him, Theo sat up. He was a dozen yards from where he'd been standing. A large section of the ship's hull was sinking beneath the water with an impressive hiss of smoke. And then the ship, aside from the smoldering pieces that lay scattered on the dock or floating on the water, was gone. Shit. Theo climbed on his feet, not bothering to brush himself off. He sighed deeply. Garlot had, or had had, enough cloud with the city fathers that the cops left him alone. But this... This was going to draw attention. Theo spared a few more seconds to survey the wreckage, and saw Katrina lying not far away of the dock. He shook his head. Shit. As he ambled over toward Katrina, she groaned and raised up on her elbow. Her hat was gone, her hair and clothes disheveled. The pale, once perfect skin of her face was abraded, although her blood had already begun to repair the worst damage. She looked at Theo, but seemed too dazed to flee. He stood above her and planted his feet squarely on his hips. Get up. Katrina just nodded at first, then the words seemed to sink in. Favoring one leg, she climbed painfully to her feet. Theo still glowered down at her. Sirens were sounding in the distance, but drawing closer. You know, he said, if I'd seen you here, I'd had to break your fucking head. Katrina stared at him, blinked twice. Some of the confusion began to clear from her eyes. She regarded him wearily. She wasn't foolish enough to try and run away. Or maybe she was just too shaken by the explosion. Yeah? She was skeptical, not hopeful. Yeah. There was no question that he could do it. 
He could reach out and snap her in two. There was no question that he should do it. This city ain't where you want to be, he said instead. Katrina nodded again, only slowly catching his meaning. She seemed to become aware of the approaching sirens now too, and began to edge away from Theo, cautiously resting her weight over an injured leg at first, but more obviously hurrying after the first few steps. Hey, Theo called. She cringed at the sound of his voice, but stopped and turned back to face him. There's two of the prince's lookouts on those two buildings back there, Theo said, pointing back over his shoulder like he was thumbing a ride. Unless you want witnesses. Yeah, I know, Katrina said. I'll take care of it. She limped away from the char portion of the dock as quickly as she could. Theo shook his head. Shit, he muttered to himself again. By the time fire trucks and ambulances showed up, he was long gone.